What does it look like to love a community rather than to leave it? She saved my life. The people here, they care. Someone cared enough to help them get better. My hope for Milwaukee is that we come together as one. Milwaukee, I love you. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. A free clinic is giving patients a chance at a longer life. Its motto, building lives, changing communities. And I discovered the Findlay Foundation is helping people discover the importance of wellness. Hi, Dr. Finley. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome to the Finley Foundation, where you'll find a free medical clinic. It serves patients with no insurance or people who are underinsured. And I was able to calculate his risk for a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years. Dr. Stephanie Finley is board vice chair of the foundation. We are an agency that provides a holistic approach um, to do a complete scan of an individual or an individual's family to see what kind of barriers they're facing. And then we try to help eliminate those barriers by providing resources and services. Client Jay Anderson is dealing with high cholesterol and diabetes. He's concerned about the lack of access to health care. We have a, a, a very rich country and uh, there's a lot of people without health insurance and a lot of people are, are dying because of uh, they don't realize some of the s stuff that they have and um, I, I just I, I think it's ridiculous. Rhonda Lane says coming here helped her get a check on her high cholesterol. If you want to live a healthy life, a longevity life, then you need to get your health check. You need to um, make sure your body is functioning properly so you can you know, be here for your family members. The Finley Foundation is funded mainly through grants. Dr. Finley wants people with no health insurance to know there are options. Because if you had not gotten treated for diabetes and high cholesterol, there's a chance you could have had a stroke or a heart attack. Yeah, oh, for sure. I uh, eat more fruits and vegetables and drink a lot of water. And now I run um, with Jog actually a mile a day now. Wow, so, you, so this place helped you change your lifestyle? Yes. Health equity is what we're lacking in the community today, and we want everyone that come through our doors to feel like they have been heard. And they have. If you'd like more information about the Finley Health Clinic, we do have a link for you at tmj4.com. The first half of the Milwaukee Public Schools spelling bee kicked off yesterday. Now, there has not been a spelling bee in 15 years, and parents are almost as excited as students to see this event return. For fourth grader Renaya Spelligans and fifth grader Serenity Carter, reading is the best subject in school. I like to learn like new things and some new words. Back in history about how like George Washington and about pirates and other people. Joining the spelling bee seemed like the obvious thing to do. And if I can do reading, I think I can know how to spell. The girls and their classmates can't wait for an opportunity to show all that they know. Serenity's mom, Shernika, remembers that feeling from her own time in the spelling bee. It was very exciting. Um, I had a lot of fun with my peers. My teachers were excited for me. My parents were proud. It's exciting for them to be able to participate in something with each other and just to see how, how much they know, it's, it's very great for them. As excited as Shanika is for Serenity's academic progress, she knows the spelling bee will help build confidence. Serenity has been a shy bug for a long time, so it's helping her step out and, you know, get comfortable with herself. Luckily, Serenity has a lot of supportive fans. I would practice like in front of my family members and cousins, like a big group of them, so then I could get over my fear. She and Renaya are more confident than ever and optimistic that they will win. It would mean so much to me. I would be very happy and my family would be very proud of me. It would mean so much to me because my family will be my family will be proud of me and then after that my mom probably will take me out for ice cream and that sounds good doesn't it now if you did miss the competition yesterday don't worry the next round will be on saturday may 21st for grades six through eight you can watch it live on tmj4.com 
is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and we are celebrating those voices right in our area. Jessica Maduker shows us a delicious cafe in Milwaukee that you might want to try. Located inside the Crossroads Collective, a food hall on the east side, you'll find Ruta's Cafe, led by herself, Ruta Kahate. We're calling it Indian food with attitude. It's the attitude of a woman who has broken many stereotypes as a South Asian. You can be expected to be a certain way, and um, we're not. Born and raised in India, she always wanted to be different, so she trained to be a pilot. I'll say I can fly planes. You know? I didn't um, ever pursue it. Instead, she later realized her passion for food. The whole idea was to bring the non-typical Indian food and uh, the health benefits and just what a vibrant cuisine it really is to the world. She opened several restaurants in Goa, a coastal city in India. Three years ago, she had a desire to embark on a new adventure, taking her cuisines to the States. While on a trip, she visited Milwaukee. It was like a three-week trip. We arrived here, we never left. Her goal in opening Ruta's Cafe has been to share Indian food with an American twist, like incorporating grilled sandwiches with curries and chutneys. For me, especially because I've lived in, like literally half my life here, half my life in India, um, this, it makes sense to me. Again, to make Indian food accessible. These dishes represent her, but also South Asian Americans and a cuisine that is evolving based on one's experience. And Ruta's Cafe is open seven days a week inside the Crossroads Collective. If you'd like to try some of her food at home, she's coming out with her third cookbook this fall. We're going to be back with more great stories, including an effort to make gardening more accessible in Milwaukee. Plus, Pedal Power, a group helping get outside by getting bikes in working order. But before we go, don't forget lunch with me every Wednesday at 12.30 on Facebook Live. A few weeks ago, I got to talk to the artistic director of Milwaukee Film. Now, you might have met her during the Milwaukee Film Festival. It just wrapped up, dedicated to showing off some fascinating films and documentaries. Every week, I talk to somebody who's doing great things in our community, a person who inspires, and is truly some positively Milwaukee, someone just like Kara Ogburn. Tune in with me every week on Facebook Live to ask questions or leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. Teachers around our area are finding sisterhood. Sarah McGrew talked to the Melanated Prince Gals about how they are helping black women succeed in education. During the pandemic, Shanora Satin Jordan looked for support and community in her career as a principal of Mesmer High School. I was lonely and stuck, so I felt that it was necessary to find a group of women that shared similar experiences as me. That's what led her to start the Melanated Prince of Gals. It created a, a great sense of sisterhood around service and educational leadership. It grew into a group of 23 black female principals from public, private, and charter schools in the Milwaukee area. And we are able to build people up and be servant leaders in our community and at our school and let other women see that you mm -hmm. too can make it happen and you can look good doing it. The women lean on each other for support and ideas and most importantly, give their students the role models they didn't necessarily have. My experience going to school, um, I did not have a principal that looked like me. And definitely one of the things that inspired me to become an educator was I wanted to make sure that other children could see people that look like them. So that our students can see that you can be a woman, particularly a woman of color, and lead, um, not only in the classroom, but still be successful personally. And students are already taking notice. I think it gives a lot of students representation. Um, it makes uh, black female students feel like that they could do good, that they could strive for greatness, seeing a black female in this position. The Prince of Gals hope this movement goes beyond Milwaukee and inspires the next generation of leaders. When you have strong women, we move the world. So when we move the world, the kids are going to move because it starts with women and women mm -hmm. makes the difference. But we are um, shaping the future mm -hmm. and so if we are moving parts of the world, Guess what? They're going to take over. 
Trust. And it is good to see women supporting women. I can't see, wait to see what these ladies accomplish for their students. Taking something old and making it new again. That's the goal of Dream Bikes in Milwaukee. Cassandra McShepard tells us about a program that's helping the entire community. Dream Bikes is a nonprofit organization that works on taking in donated bikes and refurbishing them to resell back to the community for a much cheaper cost than, say, a brand new bike shop. Our goal is to make sure you get as many bikes refurbished as possible. Are older bikes better than newer bikes? It really depends on what kind of bikes you're looking at. I would say some of the older bikes did very well for what they had back then. The category is now spread from just being something you pedal and stop with your feet. It's now gone to uh, road bike, mountain bikes, hybrids, uh, cruisers, tandems. So to say today's bikes are better, I'd say we just have more options. Anybody's welcome to donate to Dream Bikes. No matter what shape or condition the bikes are in, we'll take them here at the store. The bikes either go into becoming a refurb that you can buy on the sales floor, or they go into the community bike program. So how many bikes do you get through donations? Uh, we take in a little over 2,000 bikes a year. And those are bikes that, again, many of them end up back in the community having been refurbished. And we donate over 500 bikes a year back to different community organizations like the Salvation Army, La Casa, Pathfinders, and other organizations in Milwaukee. I'm looking for a bike. Do I need a brand new bike or am I safe doing a refurbished bike? Um, a refurbished bike is just as good as a new bike. Um, when we do a refurb, we actually do a full deluxe uh, tune-up on it. So we replace all the cables and housing, brake pads, anything that's worn out on the bike. So a brand new bike will have all new parts on it, but our refurbs are bringing it back to when the bike was new and doing all the work that's needed on it. It's a great way to recycle through a bike. Rather than just discarding a bike and just putting it into the landfill, you can take a used bike, give it some more life for a lot longer, and save yourself some money as well. A definite investment in our community, and they do have a huge inventory, a little something for everyone. Owning a home is a goal for a lot of people, but sometimes very hard to achieve. Taylor Lumpkin talked to a mother of two about how she made her dreams come true. There you are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and just like that, with the simple cut of a ribbon, Milwaukee mom Tanika Mays can officially call herself a homeowner, a word she never thought she'd be able to say. I'm the first homeowner out of my mother's children and out of my father's children. With her kids by her side during the Habitat for Humanity home dedication, Tanika showed her children that anything is possible. And it's all about, you know, breaking generational curses. Are you guys proud of your mom? Yes, yeah. very proud. She's very strong. She's she's a she's a great woman. And she does a lot of stuff for us. But before she got to this point, she struggled to live comfortably. According to Habitat officials, 60% of local renters currently pay 40, 50, and even 70% of their income just to cover the rent. How, how do you go from uh, being in a situation where you're hardworking, but you can't uh, on your own afford the significant down payment and a high interest loan uh, to afford a, a house. Which is why Tanika says she hopes others will hear her story and be inspired and know that they too can become a homeowner one day. Maybe, you know, it's a way for, you know, me to be an example and others follow suit. And we have the ability to make this community our community. Very nice, and everybody really deserves to have a home of their own. And the volunteers for Habitat work very hard to make this all happen. We have to thank them for their commitment to other people's lives. Well, stay with us after the break because we're going to show you sure signs summer is making an appearance. But first, let's meet our Positively Milwaukee Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Johanna with Haws, the Humane Animal Welfare Society in Waukesha, and today I'm joined by my positively Milwaukee pal, Copper. Copper is a seven-year-old mixed-breed dog, and he is just a lovely, lovely guy. He knows a lot of cues. Uh, he knows sit, down, scoot, and high five. And I had to encourage him to come up on the furniture, so we're thinking maybe somebody taught him not to go on the furniture. Um, he loves belly rubs. He can be dog adjacent. He is selective with his dog friends. He prefers calmer dogs. And we'd have to see how he would do around cats. 
but we would think he would do well in any family with any age kids and fit in just pretty much anywhere as long as you're willing to dole out plenty of pets and of course some treats. If you're looking to adopt a pet like Copper, please go to our website at hawespets.org or give us a call at 262-542-8851 to find out who we have here that's positively Milwaukee. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. It is a sure sign of summer. Boats are coming out of dry dock and hitting the water. Elaine Rojas Castillo gives us a peek at Milwaukee's Big Boat Day. Every spring, sailboats of all sizes make their way out of storage and onto Lake Michigan. And today, more than 35 ships got an extra boost, with a 20-foot crane gently dropping them back in the water, just in time for the start of boating season. Milwaukee Community Sailing Center Director Nick Hayes says the recent chilly temperatures haven't helped with preparations, but now it's anchors away. Everybody rushed uh, in the last couple of weeks to make sure that they were ready for it, and I think we're in a good place now. Um, skippers will uh, they'll dig in hard in order to make sure their sailing is protected. After a winter full of ups and downs, a lot of these boaters can't wait to finally hit the water for the new season. And for sailors like Joe McGlue, it couldn't come at a better time. I moved here to sail on the Great Lakes the other day. We had sunshine all day long, uh, and some days it's a bit cooler and a bit rainier, but you just go do it. And we, we, love our, we love our boats and we love the sailing community. So that makes it all that much more fun. They are so beautiful and fun to look at. Now, at least we did get a taste of summer after this cool spring we enjoyed. Soon it's going to be warm enough that we can actually get in the water. Let's hope so. Well, a lot of us are using our warmer weather to work in the garden. James Grow talked to a Milwaukee woman hoping to make gardening more accessible. This is the Milwaukee Seed Library. It's like a little free library, but with vegetable, herb, and flower seeds. Some things are harder to grow, so I want what I put in there to be uh, like accessible and kind of easy. Amanda Newman from Milwaukee just created this library May 4th. That's why she's still applying some paint to it. It's on the side of the Cactus Club in Bayview, and it's the first of its kind in Milwaukee. We want people to uh, just impulsively uh, grab seeds and experiment, uh, use this as a learning tool. Newman wants to promote sustainable living and hopes this encourages more people to garden. Gardening is way easier than you think. It's also very therapeutic and um, it is something that you have control over uh, and it feeds you for free. <laughs> There are seed libraries in other cities, but when she noticed there weren't any in Milwaukee, Newman wanted to change that. Surrounding libraries around Milwaukee have seed libraries, but the library, the Milwaukee Public Library doesn't have one. She's planning on building four more over the summer and installing them in high traffic areas in conjunction with community-oriented businesses. You can get involved too. Reach out to her on Instagram by searching for Milwaukee Seed Company. For Positively Milwaukee, I'm James Grow. What a great idea. Now, if Instagram isn't quite your thing, we do have an email contact for the Milwaukee Sea Library as well. Just go to tmj4.com. Well, as we mentioned, temperatures are finally warming up and many of us, of us are thinking about summer. So we decided to ask you, what do you have planned for your summer vacation? You know what? I just bought a uh, sleeping hammock to go camping in. I love uh, I did it last summer and it was great, so I hope to go camping and uh, try out my new sleeping hammock. We're going to Alaska. I would probably just go to Hawaii for a summer, try surfing, and uh, maybe a little bit of fishing. Can't really surf here because it's not really an ocean. I do some West African drumming. I actually play the djembe, so we'll be out here this summer. Come kind of go fishing? Yeah, what do you fish for? Everything. Gardening. I built from the ground up. I hire a handyman and he built it for me and so I'm trying to figure out what would be the type of soil that would be good for, for the bottom. I have a lot of concerts I'm looking forward to see. Chromatica for Lady Gaga is finally rescheduled so we're going to see that and um, 
Leon, who's a, a Swedish singer we're really looking forward to seeing. Uh, Bucks are going to make it to the finals, so I'll be I'll be doing that. This is our vacation. This is our vacation. I'm we're to visit Milwaukee. We're from Texas. We just got here last night pretty late, so we're just yeah. starting today. So far, this place has been pretty cool, Milwaukee Public Market. Made no plans when we came up here, so. There's a lot of interesting plans, and I like that, no plans. Then you can really enjoy life. Now, if you have summer vacation plans that you want to share with us, just go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group, or give us a question that you want us to ask for next, next week. We'd love to hear from you. Well, prom season is here. Young men and women donning their finest former wear to enjoy a special night in high school. And that's our first reason to smile, because we do have some vintage prom Fits. <laughs> and here are some pictures from our own staff here at TMJ4 in their prom finery. Tony Atkins, check it out. He wore this fabulous white tux. And Delaney Bry and Andrea Albers, both very pretty in pink. Their prom dresses look beautiful, and it looks like Andrea might have even been on the court. Marissa Wallison ended up marrying her date from this picture, but she says at the time they were just going as friends. And check out our Shannon Sims. She looks lovely in her white dress with a fabulous hairdo. And that's me. That's one of my prom pictures. I think I'm about 14 years old. I really do not remember my date's name. Isn't that terrible? Because my mom arranged my date for me. <laughs> she said, you're going with him. So I went. <laughs> well, Lakefront Brewery is hosting its very first gluten-free friendly Makers Market today. It's called Mayfest and it runs from 11 to 3. The outdoor celebration will feature vendors with food, beverages, arts and crafts. The event will celebrate the release of the first ever gluten-free barrel aged beer. The Imperial Margarita Style Ale sounds fun and tasty. I'm going to be back with my quote of the week. Democracy is threatened by the inertia of good people, by the selfishness of most people, and by the evil designs of a few people. That quote from author and scholar Stanley King. He graduated from Harvard Law School and was the author of several books. He's noted for a lot of speeches. And his quote reminds us that good people must not be idle. If not, evil will prevail and democracy could fail. Thanks for joining us this week on Positively Milwaukee. And as always, stay Positively Milwaukee.